Hi, Siana. How are you doing? Hi, Johnny. I'm, how about you? I've been good. It's just been a really busy week with school. What's new with you? No, same for me. I ended up getting a new phone last week, though. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Is this the new iPhone 11? Yeah, it's super nice. Plus, I've been needing an upgrade. Isn't this the same phone you have? Yeah, I have the same phone as you. It's awesome. Where'd you get it from? I got it from the Bafa Bafa. I use website. that website too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. How much did you end up paying for yours? I only paid $4,000. I got a 20% discount from my seller. What about you? Did you ask for a discount? Yeah, I also asked for a 20% discount, but he didn't take it. So I ended up paying $4,500. That's odd. Um, Who'd you buy it from? I bought it from Urbano. What about you? That's weird. I also ended up buying from him. That's so unfair. How can we ask for the same phone, for the same discount, from the same website, and the same seller, but I had to end up paying $500 more? I really don't know. Hey guys, I overheard your conversation. What's going on? Yeah, we went to the same website, bought from the same seller, asked for the same discount for the same product, but I ended up having to pay $500 more. Hmm. Do you guys have your chat history of how you negotiated with the seller? Yeah, I'll bring it up. Okay. Yeah, I got mine too. Okay, let me take a look. And this was my message. I would be interested in taking this off your hands. I'm willing to pick it up from you, but your asking price is too high for what you are offering. I'm willing to pay just $4,000. That's my absolute limit, non-negotiable. Hello, I'm interested in purchasing your beautiful phone. I'm happy to pick it up from you, Unfortunately, your asking price is too high for me. I can afford to pay about $4,000 if that's okay. I'm sorry, but that would have to be my limit. Anyways, have a great day. Thank you, Siana. Hmm. Okay, so I think I know what's going on, so let's go back to my office and we can talk about it some more. So Sienna and Johnny, I think I know from looking at your chat history with the sellers what might be happening because uh, we ran a lot of studies related to this. So. In our first study, we actually did something very similar to um, what you guys were experiencing, where we told participants um, to respond to a seller's ad and request for a discount. And all of the, the um, participants asked for the same exact discount, so similar to you guys, right? You guys both asked for a 20% discount. But what we told participants here is half of them, we told them research shows that being really warm and friendly and how you communicate that offer is going to be more effective. Whereas the other half were told uh, communicating in a more tough and firm way is going to be the more effective way to communicate, right, in a negotiation. And then, so they all wrote their messages and we used a natural language processing algorithm to see how people wrote differently. And what we found is something very similar to what I saw in your messages. So, um, Sienna used a lot more salutations and greetings, expressed gratitude, um, used more compliments for the phone. Also, I noticed that you used more kind of hedges and subjective language. So, in the sense that you would you would make an offer, but then you would say, oh, if that would be okay with you, right? You couched mm -hmm. it in these exceptions, and then you would say things like, would you be okay with this price? Could you be okay with this price? Would you lower the price for me? Whereas Johnny, I noticed you just kind of got directly to the fact, and you would make more kind of direct and bare commands, like lower the price for me, right? Yes. Um, and so you guys are really different in how you communicated the exact same discount, and I think that's what's driving. But on top of being warm and tough, being a woman, did being a woman play any role in the price that you receive? Like, did I have to pay more because I'm a woman? Yeah, so it's interesting. So you guys weren't negotiating face to face, but um, if you signed off with your names, perhaps the seller would know the gender of the person um, that they were negotiating with. So we were aware of that and wondering about that as well. And so in our next study that we did, we actually used gender neutral names for mm -hmm. the buyer so that um, there wouldn't be any inferences about gender. Uh, another thing, we ran a separate study where we manipulated the buyer's gender. So we made sure to write um, a female name or a male name just for like you guys and we also manipulated the communication style and what we found is that what matters more than gender is a communication style so I think it's not um, about you being a woman negotiating but I think it's about how you communicated with the seller in our next study we then took these messages, right? And then we posed as buyers, just like you guys, and we responded to 775 different sellers who are trying to sell their phones. And so all of these messages offered the exact same um, request in the sense that 
they offered 80% of whatever the listed price was. So all the buyers were asking for a 20% discount, but then um, half of them were more warm and friendly messages like yours, Sienna, and the other half were more tough and firm um, like yours, Johnny. We waited for the sellers to respond. This is a graph of the seller's behavior, right? So we, the buyers all sent a message asking for a 20% discount, and this is um, the different categories of seller behavior. Wow, maybe this data suggests that being tough is why the seller accepted my initial offer. Yeah, I think that's right, Johnny, because what this graph is telling us here is that there is no difference in the rejection rate. So those are, those are the purple bars. So that means we were always asking for a discount. A rejection means that the seller either didn't respond mm -hmm. or responded and said that they're not interested. And you could imagine, oh, maybe if you're being tough and firm, you're going to get rejected more because who wants to start a negotiation with someone who's being a jerk? But we don't find that to be the case, right? So these purple bars, the, the um, percentage of rejections are the same. But what's different is that, as Johnny noticed, um, Sellers are more likely to give a counter offer to a warm and friendly buyer, and they're more likely to accept that first offer without further negotiation when it is communicated in a tough and firm way. So between the warm and tough, do you think it's based on initial first impression or the final price is dependent on the actual negotiation? Yeah, that's a really good question. So we can see this, um, so this is happening at like the very first message. So I think that the impressions and inferences that the seller is making happens at that very first message that you sent. So um, when we, after we sent that very first message, this is um, cataloging the differences in behavior. So sellers are responding very differently to the ex exact same first offers depending on how they're communicated. And so what this means is that um, as far as who gets a better discount, we find that the tough and firm buyers are getting a significantly higher discount, right? We, we always ask for 20% and the tough and firm buyers are getting a significantly higher discount than the warm and uh, friendly, friendly buyers. Do you have to be tough to be a good negotiator in these contexts and to get that discount? Yeah, so that's a good question. When I show this research, people are like, oh, does that mean that I should just be a jerk all the time, everywhere, and that's going to be more advantageous for me? So absolutely not the case, right? Um, one thing to notice is that when we told people to be tough and firm, it's not that they were being jerks. It's not that they were, you know, um, being very rude or making any threats, right? Because we all know that wouldn't be very productive in a negotiation. So all it is is it's just devoid of that kind of extra warmth and politeness, right? So you were making more kind of direct requests on what you wanted and not kind of couching that with extra levels of politeness and respect and deference. Um, and then another thing to, to, to note is that it depends on what your uh, negotiation goal is and what kind of negotiation you're in, right? And so if the only goal of a conversation or a negotiation is for someone to be warm and friendly back to you, of course, then you should be warm and friendly to them. But in a situation where this is strictly about a very competitive case of value claiming, right? We're not doing any value creating. It's just the um, price of the phone is the only thing that you're negotiating for, right? So the more you get, the less the other person gets. So in these kind of purely competitive contexts, a tough and firm approach may be uh, more advantageous to you. But I think it's a bit intuitive that a lot of people believe that being warm would be advantageous. If this re research shows otherwise, where do you think we all went so wrong? Yeah, so that's a really good point. So most people are like you, Sienna. When they um, sit down to negotiate and send out that message, they're like, oh, I'm going to be warm and friendly, um, not only because perhaps it feels uh, easier to be that way and feels just more pleasant to be um, warm, um, but also because people think that uh, they're going to get more from the seller if they kind of butter them up, right? Um, the nicer you are, the nicer you'll be back to me. And what happens is that what I think we get confused on is that we're very aware of kind of the direct um, social repercussions of being warm and friendly. So if I'm warm and friendly to you, you're more likely to be warm and friendly back to me, right? And so I, I notice that immediately. But what I don't notice is if I'm warm and friendly to you, you're making certain inferences about me, right? Mm -hmm. So in this competitive context, what happens is that uh, you are warm and friendly to the seller, Sienna, and you probably noticed that the seller was very warm and friendly back to you, but they just didn't give you the discount, right? So they're more tough on you economically, but they still, um, 
they still mimic your, your politeness in language. So I think that's why we often, uh, we often get it wrong. So in our next study, so in the previous study, we, it was only one turn of the negotiation, right? So the first offer is made and then it's a counter offer. That's all I was able to measure because this was a real marketplace. We didn't want to interfere with sellers' abilities to, um, to sell their phone. So this time we brought people into a lab and uh, they were either buyers or sellers and they were paired up anonymously online and they were negotiating through this online chat platform. And what we did is we had half of the buyers be like you, Sienna, be really warm and friendly in how you negotiate. And the other half were told to be like Johnny, right, to be very tough and firm. Um, and all of the offers, though, very, all of the buyers, very importantly, they sent the same um, first offer, right? And so um, the same first offer of 250 was sent, um, but couched in these very different communication styles. And we wanted to see, you know, the effect that we saw in study two, does it hold until the very end of the negotiation? And we found that to be the case. So again, these warm and friendly, poor warm and friendly buyers, they ended up paying a significantly higher amount for the same exact um, item than the tough and firm buyers, even though all buyers started out at the exact same point. Okay, yes, that maybe tough buyers got to pay a little bit less, but what is the cost? Like there must be a cost. Oh yeah, right. So you're wondering, okay, tough buyers do well, Johnny did well, but maybe that seller never wants to negotiate with Johnny ever again. And he tells other people, don't negotiate with Johnny because he's really tough. So that's a valid concern. But what we found is that um, when, we asked the, um, when we asked the sellers, how was your experience with, um, with the buyers, we found actually no difference um, in enjoyment between the sellers who are paired with the warm buyers and the tough buyers. And we were actually surprised by that as well because, you know, wouldn't it be more um, enjoyable to negotiate with someone who's being warm and friendly to you? And what we thought perhaps might be driving this um, effect is that when you're negotiating with someone who's warm and friendly, because you're warm and friendly back to them, this whole process takes so much longer, right? Because you need to use more words to be warm and friendly, and then they use more words, and it's just a longer protracted negotiation. So perhaps that may be the reason why um, you're, you're, you know, there's no difference in, in enjoyment here. Would you say in these negotiations that it's like the buyer's initial action or the seller's reactions that like affect the um, discounted price and the negotiations. Oh, Johnny, that's a really good point. So um, in the study, right, remember I told you that the warm and friendly buyers um, ended up paying more, they did worse, right? But you're right in that there could be two explanations for this. It could be that the buyers are driving the effect, right? So even though I told people, only let this affect your communication style and not how you negotiate, right? But it could be the case maybe when people are trying to be warm and friendly, it um, it affects not only the way they communicate, but how they negotiate. So maybe these people are just making um, bigger and faster concessions. So that's why they get a worse deal. But the other explanation could be, no, 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 the buyers are um, negotiating economically exactly the same, but it's really this effect, this strip, this difference is driven by the sellers responding economically differently. And so we wanted to see the answer to that question. And so this is a graph that tracks the entire concession patterns of all buyers and sellers from the very beginning until the end. So it looks a little bit confusing, but I'll walk you through it. So this is the x-axis, every tick is an offer that was made in the negotiation, and the y-axis is the corresponding dollar amount. So uh, we have four lines here, right? And so the orange lines are the buyers and the buyers who are warm and the sellers who are negotiating with them. The two blue bars are the dotted ones are the tough buyers, and then the solid lines are the sellers who are paired with the tough buyers. And the most important thing that I want to point out is First, um, just like you guys, right, the warm and tough buyer started out with the exact same first offer price. Um, and what happens is at the very first message, right, the sellers are responding very differently to these exact same first offers, right? And that's what you guys saw in your experience as well. And then when we look to see what do the buyers do next, they're not making different kinds of concessions, right? So they're economically, they're acting very similarly, but again, the sellers are responding economically very differently to the buyer's offers. So it's, this difference is really driven by the sellers or the recipients uh, reacting differently to these different communication styles.
And so some takeaways for you guys. Um, when people are trying to be warm and friendly in a negotiation, what they do is they end up really increasing their levels of politeness in their conversation, right? So um, giving more deference and respect to the other person. And normally that's a good thing in our everyday social interactions, but when you're in this kind of purely competitive context, right, we find that the tough and firm negotiators like Johnny end up with better economic results at no social cost as much as we can see. And this is really driven by uh, the people who are receiving these communication styles responding economically uh, differently. Wow, thank you, Professor. I could see how, although it's important to be nice, um, a direct and firm communication style is more advantageous in these situations. I was thinking about getting a new iPad since school's about to start. What think, do you think? I think that's a great idea. Where are you trying to get it from? I'm probably going to use the same website again, Bafa Bafa. Ooh, I think you should try to be more firm and direct in your negotiation. Yeah, I'm going to try to act tougher this time. Hopefully I get the discount. Thank you.